Hello everyone. Good day. This is Alvin John Roble, and today I will be discussing to my research paper on cosmology entitled Exploring Epicurus Cosmology. So basically my uh, philosopher is Epicurus. So to begin, let us uh, have the first the philosophical question confronted. So, what is the nature of the cosmos according to Epicurus? And later on, so we will answer this question. For a thesis, Epicurus posits a materialistic and atomistic cosmology, emphasizing the pursuit of tranquility through understanding the natural world. And exploring Epicurus cosmology, we uh, we will explore into this materialistic view of the universe and how it aligns with the pursuit of tranquil life. So to support, the cosmos, according to Epicurus, is composed of indivisible atoms moving in an infinite void. Or just uh, for Epicurus, we... Uh, uh, or he described the universe as an moving particles, which is uh, basically understood as a kind of, uh, they don't really uh, go into the same direction or they have this what we call a, a way, a path, a natural path, but they just uh, moving. Uh, Anonymously. So for the second point, Epicurus argued that understanding the natural world, including the cosmos, is essential for dispelling fear and attaining mental peace. So it is hard for us to understand the world, but for Epicurus, no, it is a uh, for him it is a uh, opening point that we will be at peace when we understand or we uh, discover the natural world for the third point the swerve or let's say a movement introduces an element of unpredictability challenging a deterministic worldview and contributing to the complexity of epicurus cosmology so other than uh, the points, there, all, uh, there are also a lot of objections. So, there are the objections. First, critics such as Aristotle argued that Epicurus as the mystic view lacks divine purpose. Or let's say that Epicurus uh, reject the idea of the divine. So, Epicurus maintained that a purposeless cosmos allows for a human freedom and autonomy promoting the pursuit of individual happiness. For the objections to existentialist philosophers like Jean Paul Sartre argue that Epicurus focus on tranquility ignores external factors influencing your being. But however, Epicurus acknowledge external factors but emphasizes internal attitudes and knowledge as fundamental in achieving tranquility. For the third point, third objection to the third point, deterministic philosophers such as Thomas Hobbes questioned the cons consistency of natural laws with the int introduction of the swerve. The pickers argued that the swerve maintained the overall regularity of the natural law while allowing for freedom and randomness of the atomic. Atomic level, level. So, in order to understand, where are the answers for the first objection? Aristotle critics Epicurus' optimistic view for its absence of divine purpose, highlighting the latter's re reliance on random atomic motions. However, Epicurus contends that divine purpose is unnecessary in explaining the universe workings as natural laws, including random atomic movements, suffice. 
to debate the venerable and epicure centers on differing conceptions of causality, causality and the rule of tele teleology in understanding the cosmos. For the, for the answer for the second objection, Epicurus would likely respond by emphasizing the importance of achieving tranquility as a state of inner peace and contentment, regardless of external cir circumstances, while acknowledging the existence of external factors that may influence well being. Epicurus would argue that true happiness stems from cultivating a calm and tranquil mind, free from unnecessary desires and fears. And he might suggest that focusing on attaining inner tranquility through the pursuit of pleasure and avoidance of pain, individuals can navigate external challenges with greater resilience and serenity, ultimately leading to a more fulfilling life. For the, third, for the answer to the third objection, Epicurus introduces the concept of the swerve to address the deterministic view of the nature of nature proposed by philosopher like uh, Thomas Hobbes. According to Epicurus, while natural laws govern the motion of atoms, the swerve introduces an element of randomness or indeterminacy into the universe. This idea allows for the possibility of a free will and agency. It is suggests that not all events are predetermined by causal change. Epicurus argues that the swerve is necessary to account for human autonomy and the unpredictability observed in nature, providing a nuanced understanding of causality that incorporates both determinism and indeterminism. Thus, rather than undetermining the consistency of natural laws, the swerve enriches our understanding of the complex interactions within the universe, reconciling determinism and the possibility of human freedom. <clears throat> so I now see that the chaotic rhythm of my daily existence, Epicurus metaphor of atoms <clears throat> and motions, becomes a reflection of life's inherent dynamism. Rather than viewing challenges as disruptions, I see them as part of the cosmic dance each event contributing to the beautiful randomness that shapes my journey. This perspective instills in me a sense of acceptance, reminding me that amidst, amidst the blocks, there is a unique order to be found. So in real life, in my pursuit of happiness, I drew inspiration from Epicurus' cosmic philosophy. The idea of a purposeless cosmos empowers me to shape my narrative consciously. Instead of feeling constrained, by predetermined paths, I embrace the freedom to carve my own way in the dance of existence. When faced with external pressures, Epicurus emphasizes on inner strength, guides my responses by cultivating a resilient mindset. I not only endure but rise above challenges. Finding genuine peace within myself, the dance of atoms becomes a practical guide for navigating life's complicities. It encourages me to appreciate the beauty of our in unpredictability, fostering a mindset that embraces both order and spontaneity. This perspective enriches my experience, allowing me to find meaning in the ever-changing narrative of my life. That would be all, and thank you for listening.